Hey Ariana, it's Skylar, Edward's mom. Just wanted to say a quick thanks for swinging by today. I know our meeting was super short, but we got hit with a work emergency, and you know how it goes. Hope you understand. Hello, Skylar. Thanks for contacting me. I was wondering what was going on. So we should schedule a meeting, and we can actually meet up. I hope you weren't anticipating anything fancy or extravagant. Just keep it simple, you know. I didn't have any specific expectations, but I had the hope of coming over to your house and spending some time with you, maybe sitting down for a chat. However, you didn't allow me to enter past the entrance. Oh, I really hope we didn't rub you the wrong way or anything. We were caught up in a work emergency. You know how it is when you're running a business with your husband. You never get a break. Okay, I understand. I'm sure we'll have plenty of time to get to know each other. Oh dear, no, I don't think so. I don't think it will work out. You see. I don't understand. Are you saying you're busy? No, no. What I actually meant to say is that a relationship between you and my Edward wouldn't be feasible. You see. I don't believe you're a suitable match for our family. What? So you're trying to break me and Edward up? Why? Ariana, let's not resort to being rude here. I'm simply stating that there won't be a marriage, and that's the end of it. Edward will find another person to marry. I'm sure. As for you, well, that is not my concern. Are you really trying to end our relationship? What have I done to make you dislike me this much? We hardly even have a chance to speak for even just a few minutes. You wouldn't even allow me inside. It's quite evident that you and Edward are not compatible with each other. I'm sure you can comprehend the implication of my statement. Not at all, actually. First, I go to my fiance's house to meet the family, and they won't even let me in the house. Then my fiance's mother tries to break off my engagement. What is going on? The hell if I know. Hey, language, Ariana. You're a lady, or so I've been told. Please try to keep that in mind, even though your appearance might not exactly reflect it. I mean, just look at your short hair, with that yellow and green dye. I don't see you as a suitable match for Edward. I mean, imagine you as his wife. And the mother of his children, ha!、Huh. I don't understand the problem. I'm an independent woman. I do charity work, have many good friends, and am well liked. My parents aren't rich, but they are very decent people and well respected in the community. I don't understand why I'm being treated this way. Maybe you should take a good long look in the mirror, and you'll see why. The mirror? You know. When Edward mentions that he was bringing his fiance around, my mind immediately went to grandkids. It's just a thing that pops up when you reach my age, you know. My Edward is such a good-looking guy, and I can only imagine how adorable his future kids will be. But I've got to be honest; it's a bit challenging to picture what unfortunate grandbabies would look like if this union were to happen. I can't keep talking like this. I need to talk to Edward. This is getting out of hand. I thought I'd be generous enough to extend my gratitude for your visit today, and I must say it was a pleasure to meet you. However, let's get real here. Things are not going to work out between you and my precious son. Just being honest with you here. Hey, Ariana, it's Natasha, Edward's sister. Just wanted to say sorry about that awkward conversation you had with mom. Hi, Natasha. Thank you for getting in touch with me. I'm so confused. Do you know what's going on? Oh yeah, that's why I contacted you. Let me clear up a few things. Please. None of this makes sense. Getting rejected at the door? Edward's not texting me back or answering my calls. I don't know what I could have done to make your mother object to my marrying Edward. So she didn't tell you? She kept saying something about grandkids and looking in the mirror. It really didn't make sense. Yes,、yeah, sorry about that. My mom's always been that way. She's too polite for her own good. 
All right, here it comes, the truth. The fact is, you, Ariana, are far too... Ugly! Get real, pig. How did you think you were going to marry Edward with that face? What? You're kidding, right? I don't even know what to say. You're not the one that's got to be kidding trying to marry anybody with that face. And you know, it's just basic decency to at least try to make yourself look half decent. You're barely wearing any makeup. Did you even check the mirror before leaving your house today? Of course. I chose more natural makeup because I was meeting my future parents-in-law. Or so I thought. I didn't want to cake on makeup and give them a bad impression. Natural makeup only works in naturally good-looking people. If you look like you were drop on your face as a baby, you've got to cake that crap on. I think I looked fine. I even got my sister to help me pick out my outfit. This is not something you can change like your outfit. It's about the raw material. I'm just telling you why you're not a good fit for our family. We don't want your fat, ugly DNA to get mixed up with our beautiful genes. It just can happen. Uh-huh. So I'm too ugly to be in your family. <laughs> exactly. More importantly, it's to protect the children. It would be so tragic if they turned out looking like you. Can you see everything wrong with your face? Look at those eyes. They are so far apart. They look like you got punched in the face and they flew apart. Um, my eyes are fine. Are you kidding me? Your eyebrows are so bushy. Have you ever tweezed them? It's just the natural style. Don't talk about style, Ariana. Uggos need to learn, not preach. Like I said, the natural look is not for you. And that nose? Oh my god! I've never seen a bigger nose in my entire life! See? Makeup can fix that. And even if you can get a rhinoplasty, imagine the kids. They're going to be teased their whole lives. People aren't that cruel, Natasha. I mean, usually. I don't think I've ever received such harsh criticisms about my looks. So, I'm the only one who's ever been truthful to you. You should be grateful. Speaking of bad DNA, what's going on with your skin? I don't care what race you are, but ugly is not okay. You're white, but you're not? You're dark, but you have freckles? Seriously, your face is an unfortunate mix of hideous DNA just smushed together. All right. I've had about enough. You and your mother have made your opinion pretty clear, but I haven't even heard from Edward. Oh, I hope I didn't give you the wrong impression. It's not just my mom and me. Everyone in our family unanimously agreed that you were definitely too ugly to marry, Edward. What? You're your dad and your sister too? Oh yeah, my sister laughed until she cried a little after you left. She said you look like the witch from Hansel and Gretel. It was just a book we had as kids. You actually really do look like her though. <laughs> I suppose your father had a good laugh at my expense as well. Oh no, he was so angry. He yelled at Edward that he didn't want to be surrounded by freak show kids and if he wanted to get married to you, he had to promise never to reproduce. Oh my god, how can he say something like that? I can't believe he'd call his fictional grandkids freaks. We're just a family of realists, okay Ariana? You need to get over Edward and move on. One thing you might not know, but Edward is a bad boy of her family, you know? Always cooking up ridiculous schemes. Apparently, he thought he could just coast through life if he married a rich woman. He thought it would be funny to have an ugly sugar mama paying for his every need. So he was with me for my money? I mean, why else? As soon as the family started talking to him out of it, he agreed it wasn't worth it. Money and status is all fine and good, but having to look at the face every day? That's torture. I can't believe it. So he was faking it the whole time. He never loved me? Who could love a face like yours? You really need to take better care of yourself. Maybe learn how to use makeup or splurge on the rhinoplasty I mentioned earlier. At least learn to choose your lipstick color, right? It was hideous on you. You're born uglier, right? Then, do what you can do about it. Learn contouring. Know how to highlight. There's amazing tutorials online now. You don't have to look like that. Some people choose to put a lot of effort in their looks and makeup. That's fine. But I feel comfortable just wearing a little bit when I go out. I'll get a little more adventurous with darker colors and eyeliners when I'm going out at night. 
But in general, I think I look fine like this. You don't look fine. Hi. <sighs> I guess I'm just triggered by low lives who don't make any effort to improve themselves. Low lives? Now I'm a low life because I don't subscribe to your world view? I have feelings, you know. I don't deserve to be treated like this. Wrong again, Ariana. Ugly people are scum. They don't deserve anything but a wake-up call. They are a menace to society. I'm going to call it visual pollution. They're harming others' sight when they see you. I can't even. I'm just shocked there are people like you in this world. A lot of people feel how I do. You have inferior DNA. If you were up to me, I'd have your tubes tied. Natasha, that's enough. I understand how you feel. I also understand that there is no way that Edward and I are getting back together. I'm glad I found out he was using me for my money before we got married. Please thank him for backing out for me. I'm glad you finally seem to understand your place. Yes. I don't fit in with your family and you don't fit in with Lux Vogue. I am rescinding your job offer for the position as a full-time employee. Wait, what? Slow down. How do you know I got a job at Lux Vogue? Did Edward tell you or something? But I didn't tell him yet. This doesn't make any sense. What are you talking about? I've realized from our interaction that you are not suited to become a part of the Lux Vogue family. Our company philosophy is, true beauty lies in every smile. Light up your face with confidence. I don't think ugly people are worthless and need a wake up call has the same message. Wait, um, I'm so confused. I don't understand what you would be confused about. This is quite simple. But no, you're playing some sort of joke on me, right? You're just trying to get back at me for what I said, right? This isn't revenge. This is a business decision. Lux Vogue doesn't want someone who would discriminate on people based on their looks, let alone say things like ugly people are scum. As CEO, I am making an executive decision to cancel the offer of employment. You're serious right now? Yes. I'm the CEO of Lux Vogue. I know. Can you believe it? I actually own a makeup company. Me. The fat, ugly witch from Hansel and Gretel. Uh... I'm sorry, I don't want to lose my new job. I never thought that the fiancé my brother brought home would be my future boss. Please, forgive me. I didn't mean any of the stuff I said. Please don't change your attitude now. You and I both know you meant every word. Then I apologize for offending you. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry, please, don't rescind my job offer. I've worked so hard to get this. It's been my dream my whole life to work at your company. I loved makeup ever since I was a little girl. I couldn't believe it when I got the internship at your company last year. I've been working really hard and learning a lot. I know. My employees speak very highly of you. They say you're a hard worker and always punctual and polite. You really seem to enjoy your time on the job. In fact, when I asked the employees who I should hire out of our interns this year, your name was the first to come up. Really? I'm so honored. I love every minute of working there. I'm really looking forward to being a full-time employee after I finish school. I'm afraid that's no longer possible. I've seen your true colors, and I didn't like what I saw. Ariana, please. I'm a good worker. You said so yourself. You can check with the people I work with. I would be a model employee if you hired me, as planned. You're very good at trying to manipulate people. But it's too late with me. You'll be receiving a written notification of rescinding of the job offer within a few business days. No, there's gotta be some way I can fix this. I know, I'll help you marry my brother. I'll convince my family to let you marry Edward. Oh, you think you could do that? I know I can, just give me a few days. I'll make sure Edward takes you back, so please hire me. I need to work at Lux Vogue. Your family belittled and rejected me just for how I look. I've never been so offended in my life. I didn't even know your brother just wanted a sugar mama to leech off of until you told me. I learned a lot about myself today. First of all, I have horrible taste in men. I really need to rethink what I saw in Edward before dating again. Wait, what? But you're getting back with him, right? He'll marry you, I promise. I don't know what makes you so confident about this. It's kind of creepy. 
but I definitely don't want a user leech in my life. I won't be needing your matchmaking services. But I need that job. It's been my dream all my life to work in cosmetics. I love making people beautiful. The smiles I get for doing people's makeup are the best. I would live in a Lux Vogue store if I could. I know you love our products, Natasha. I also know you have incredible passion, have a lot of raw talent. As I said, I'm not doubting that. The issue is more of an ideological difference. We're not kidding when we say every person is beautiful. They really are, Natasha. Our products enhance people's natural beauty, but it's not meant to alter someone's face to attain some unrealistic current beauty standard. You literally said ugly people are worthless and that I should tie my tubes. I, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said such a horrible thing. I apologize. I would never have said anything like that if I knew you were the CEO of Luxvog. I just thought you were some random woman Edward brought home. You really don't get it, do you? It's not about who I am. That's reprehensible. The way you talk down to a fellow human being like that? I can't believe that people like you exist in this day and age. Do you feel better about yourself when you put others down? Um, no, I don't think so some movements speaking up against body shaming and Photoshop creating unrealistic beauty standards. So we're making some progress, but people like you still tear down those around you and lower people's self-esteem as if it were some sort of joke. I, I never thought of it that way. I just like makeup. It's one thing to use makeup to feel confident in your skin and that helps you put your best foot forward with whatever you're doing. Your love of makeup has morphed into a disgusting hierarchy of beauty you've created for yourself. I can change. Please, just give me a chance. I just need to prove myself. Please, Ariana, I'm begging you. I'm not saying you can't change, Natasha. I would never tell anyone that. But as for your job offer, that's gone for good. Since Edward and I aren't engaged anymore, we're not going to be family. And since you won't be working at my company, you won't be my employee either. Let's just go our separate ways and learn from our mistakes and move on. Wait, let's talk about this. I'm sure we can work something out. No. Ariana, please listen to me. We're done. Please stop texting me. I need a job, please. You're going to ruin my life. I'm sorry, but I can't keep responding. Goodbye, Natasha. Ariana? Ariana! Ariana, please answer. Have you seen the text my daughter Natasha has sent you? I believe she's been trying to reach you all morning. Please, Ariana. I'm asking you on her behalf. Please don't revoke her job offer. She's crushed. Hello, Skylar. I don't really think there's anything to discuss. It's just like how you took one look at me in front of your house and knew I wouldn't be a good fit for your family. After talking with your daughter, I know there's no way I can accept someone like her to be working for my company. She's wanted to work in the cosmetics industry ever since she started playing with my makeup in elementary school. She was so happy when she got the internship with you. She actually cried. She would tell anyone who would listen that she is working for the best cosmetic company in the world. She needs this job. She's been crying all day. The dogs won't stop howling. I'm sorry to hear about your dogs. They didn't do anything to deserve that. And yes, your daughter showed great enthusiasm at our stores and definitely has talent in terms of makeup. That does not compensate for her absolutely deplorable conscience in berating people she deems ugly. Well, I know she can be a little outspoken sometimes. She's young. I'm sure she'll grow up. That's very interesting, coming from you. Don't you feel the exact same way about beauty, Skylar? You may be less in your face about it than Natasha, but she does get her mean streak from somewhere. It must be that beautiful DNA she was talking about. Beautiful DNA? Yes. When she so kindly contacted me to clarify why you had rejected me from being part of the family, she told me very clearly, your family had beautiful DNA and it would be a tragedy to have my fat, 
ugly DNA mixed in with yours. Oh my goodness. I'm sure she didn't mean it to sound so harsh. I'm sure she meant exactly what she said. There is no way I can have someone who would suggest that ugly people should not reproduce work at Lux Vogue. She could potentially ruin the image of the company. I'd like to stay as far away from people like her as possible. I know about that. She deeply regrets what she said about getting your tubes tied. She knows it was wrong and she changed her attitude. I hope she does, but I'm not going to be involved. Natasha's job offer is rescinded. That's final. So that's how you're going to be? You incessant cow of a woman. You think you can get away with treating people like that just because you're a CEO? There are laws put in place to protect employees from this kind of abuse. Abuse? I see you've decided to cut out the polite madame act. All right, let's hear it. Your company made an official job offer. The terms of the contract were clear and she is to start in September. Uh-huh, and now it's canceled. You can't just cancel an agreement because you don't like someone. Grow up. So, Natasha called you ugly. Take a look in the mirror. Did she lie? No. So you'd better hire her as planned and let her start without any issues in September. Or we're going to sue. Oh, well, I don't want to get sued. That's right. CEOs aren't gods, you know. You have to have a justifiable reason to terminate a contract. I'm not a dummy. You're not going to get away with this. I know my rights. Skylar, I've got to say you're making a lot more sense than the last time we talked. Straight to the point. I like it. And yes, everybody has rights. I'm well aware of that. But I won't be having any trouble with rescinding Natasha's job offer though. And she has broken her requirement from starting. What stupid excuse are you going to come up with now? You should spend more time learning to use your own company's products instead of harassing young adults. A four-year university degree is a prerequisite to the job. If she can't show her diploma, she can't join our company. What? Natasha's graduating in June. She's a senior. Actually, she doesn't have enough credits to graduate this year. This can't be happening. Tell me this isn't happening. She's going to have to go to university for another year? Yes. She'll have to go for another year if she wants to graduate. But how could this happen? She's been getting good grades. She showed me. You should probably ask her yourself about this. But I was told she skipped out on her final exams and disappeared. She missed her finals? She must have been sick. I'll talk to the school. I don't think she was sick. I was informed by the school. She missed every exam. There's no way she can graduate. What? But what about Natasha's plans? Why would she do this? I don't know the details. And the school didn't seem to understand why a student would do this. She disappeared without telling the school. They almost filed a missing persons report. Why was I not informed? Everything is ruined. You did this to us. You're just fighting us because I wouldn't let you marry Edward, right? You can marry him. I accept. I think you would be a lovely match for him. What are you saying? Like mother, like daughter, I guess. You can fudge the paperwork. You're the CEO, right? You'll marry Edward. Natasha will work at your company. It's perfect. I'm honestly kind of scared of your family. How can you just decide who Edward marries? Natasha said she can make him marry me, which is a little alarming. We're just being cooperative. This can still work out. No, it can't. I won't be with some loser who plans to laze around and mooch off his wife. As for your daughter, I thank her for her interest in Lux Vogue, but wish her the best of luck. We won't be hiring her. Please inform her that her application will not be welcome next year even if she does complete her BA. Do not contact me directly or through my company. Goodbye, Skylar. It turned out that Natasha's sudden disappearance before her finals was because she had to follow her favorite boy band on their tour. 
The group coincidentally started touring the U.S. right before the exams, and Natasha couldn't resist the temptation. She impulsively bought tickets and attended the concerts without informing anyone. Unfortunately, it was later discovered that she had stolen a significant amount of money from her parents to finance her concert attendance and merchandise purchases. As a result of her actions, Natasha has become an outcast at the university. She's been bragging about landing her dream job at Lux Vogue and has been alienating others by criticizing their work ethic and offering unsolicited beauty advice. Meanwhile, Edward faced termination from his job due to multiple complaints from female colleagues about his unwelcome advances and inappropriate behavior. It appears he was attempting to find another financial supporter to sustain his carefree lifestyle, but things didn't go as planned. Natasha seems to have lost touch with reality and has started behaving erratically. She has developed a belief that I somehow cursed her family, leading her to perform rituals using makeup in an attempt to break the curse. Natasha has been on a spree of buying Lux Vogue makeup to use during these unusual rituals. Let me make it clear. I didn't curse her family. My hope is that Natasha realizes beauty goes beyond appearances and that the world is filled with genuine beauty. However, for now, it seems she is coping with whatever she's going through by purchasing my products. While I don't wish to associate myself with Natasha ever again, I do appreciate her loyalty as a customer.